when he rests on the axiom that every man is the owner of his mind and his effort. Money allows no power to describe the value of your effort except the voluntary choice of a man who is willing to trade you his effort in return. source 
But when a society establishes criminals by right and looters by law, then we use force to seize the wealth of disarmed victims. Then money becomes its creator's avenger. Such looters will believe it's safe to rob defenseless men once they've passed the law to disarm them. But their loot becomes the magnet for other looters, but who get it from them as they got it. Then the race goes not to the ablest of production, to those most ruthless at brutality. When force is the standard, the murderer wins over the pickpocket, and then that society vanishes in a spread of ruin and slaughter. You wish to know whether that day is coming? Watch money. Money is the barometer of a society's virtue. When you see that trading is done not by consent, but by compulsion, when you see that in order to produce, you need to obtain permission from men who produce nothing. When you see that money is flowing to those who deal, not in goods, but in favors. When you see that men get richer by graft, by fold, and by work, your laws don't protect you against them, but protect them against you. You seek corruption being rewarded and honesty becoming a self-sacrifice. You may know that your society is doomed. Money is so noble and medium that it does not compete with guns and it does not make terms with brutality. It will not permit a country to survive as half property, half loot. Whenever destroyers appear among men, they start by destroying money. Money is men's protection in the face of a moral existence. Destroyers seize gold, leave to its owners a counterfeit pile of Paper. This kills all of objective standards and delivers men to the arbitrary power of arbitrary set of values. Gold was an objective value, an equivalent of wealth produced. Paper is a mortgage, a wealth that does not exist. By a gun aimed at those who are expected to produce it. Paper is a check drawn by legal looters upon an account which is not theirs, upon the virtue of the victims. Watch for the day when it bounces, marked, account, overdrawn. When you have made evil the means of survival, do not expect men to remain good. Do not expect them to stay moral and lose their lives for the purpose of becoming the father of the immoral. Do not expect them to produce when production is punished, looting, rewarded. Do not ask who is destroying the world. You are. Stand in the midst of the greatest achievements of the greatest productive civilization, and you wonder why it's crumbling around you while you're damning its lifeblood, money. You look around you, you look upon money as the savages did before you, and you wonder why the jungle is creeping back to the edges of your cities. Throughout man's history, money was always seized by looters of one brand or another, whose names changed, but whose method remained the same, to seize wealth by force, and to keep the producers bound, demeaned, defamed, deprived of honor. That phrase
phrase about the evil of money, which you mouth with, with such righteous recklessness, comes from a time when wealth was produced by the labor of slaves. Slaves who repeated the motion, once discovered by somebody's mind, and left unimproved for centuries. So long as production was ruled by force, and wealth was obtained by conquest, there was little to conquer. Yet through all the centuries of stagnation and starvation, men exalted the looters as aristocrats of the world, as aristocrats of birth, as aristocrats of the bureau, and despised the producers as slaves, traders, keepers, as industrialists. To the glory of mankind there was, for the first and only time in history, a country of money, and I have no higher or reverent privilege to pay for America, for this means a country of reason, justice, freedom, production, achievement, for the first time man's mind and money were set free, and there were no fortunes by conquest but only fortunes by work. And instead of swordsmen and slaves, there appeared the real maker of wealth, the greatest worker, the highest type of human being, self-made man, the American industrial. If you ask me to name the proudest distinction of Americans, I would choose, because it contains all others, the fact that they were the people who created the phrase to make money. No other language or nation has ever used these terms before, and it always thought of wealth as a static quantity to be seized, to be begged, inherited, shared, concluded, or obtained as a favor. Americans were the first to understand that wealth can't be created. The words to make money hold the essence of human morality. Yet these were the words for which Americans were denounced by the rotted cultures of the looters' continents. Now the looters' credo has brought you to regard your proudest achievement as a hallmark of fame, your prosperity as guilt, your greatest men, the industrialists as blackguards, and your magnificent factories as the product property of muscular labor, the labor of whip-driven slaves like the pyramids of Egypt, the rotter who simpers that he sees no difference between the power of the dollar and the power of the whip, ought to learn the difference on his own part, as I think he will. To tell and unless you discover that money is the root of all good. You ask for your own destruction. Money ceases to be the tool by which men deal with one another. And men will become the tools of men. Blood, whips, guns, or dollars. Take your choice. There is no other. Your time is running out. <laughs>